In the earlier video lecture, we have seen the importance of MOSFET transconductance. And we arrived at three equations to determine the MOSFET transconductance. The MOSFET transconductance depends upon three design parameters, namely the aspect ratio of the MOSFET, the drain current and the wall drive voltage. Designers can select suitably among these designer parameters to determine the MOSFET transconductance. In the present video lecture, let us try to analyze constant current source biasing in more detail. The important components of the constant current source biasing are the gate resistor, the drain resistor and the constant current source. The gate resistor RG is connected to the gate of the MOSFET and establishes a DC voltage at the gate of the MOSFET. And also the RG presents a large resistance for the signal source connected to the gate of the MOSFET. The value of RG is usually in mega ohms. The resistor RD connected at the drain of the MOSFET establishes an appropriate DC voltage at the drain and also the voltage at the drain allows required output signal swing while ensuring that the transistor remains in saturation. The circuit for presenting for providing constant current source is elaborated and the same is presented here. The constant current source uses two transistors. Let us call the first transistor as Q1 and the next one as Q2. The transistor Q1 is also called as diode connected transistor since the gate of the transistor is shorted to the drain of the transistor. Therefore, the voltage at the gate is also equal to the voltage at the drain making the transistor Q1 to operate in the saturation region. The current flow through the transistor, saturated transistor can be controlled by varying the resistor value or connected at the drain of the MOSFET. In our analysis, let us assume that VDD equals 10 volts and minus VSS equals minus 10 volts and let us present the current at each branch and voltage at each nodes. Now let us assume that the desired drain current is 1 milliampere. That is the drain current flowing here is 1 milliampere. Now the saturation current equation can be written as ID equals 1 by 2 mu n COX W by L into VGS minus VT whole square. Since the desired drain current is 1 milliampere, let us assume half of mu n COX times W by L as 1 milliampere and gate to source voltage as 2 volt. Typical value of threshold voltage is 1 volt. The computation of this yields ID as 1 milliampere. Now we can say that ID mainly depends on gate source voltage. Therefore, to produce ID as 1 milliampere, the gate source voltage required is say 2 volt. The same can be interpreted in the circuit also. To produce ID as 1 milliampere, the gate to source voltage needed is 2 volts. Now let us assume that the transistors Q1 and Q2 are matched. Therefore, the gate to source voltage of the Q1 transistor is same as the gate to source voltage of the Q2 transistor. Once the gate to source voltage of both transistors are same, the VGS of Q1 produces 1 milliampere. Therefore, VGS of Q2 transistor also produces the drain current as 1 milliampere. Therefore, we can say the circuit shown here acts as a current mirror. The current mirror circuit the heart of the current mirror circuit is Q1. Therefore, if we desire 1 milliampere current here, the same current we can generate here. The current here produced flowing through the Q2 transistor is the mirror of the current flowing through the Q1 transistor. Provided the transistors Q1 and Q2 are matched. 
the VGS of Q1 and VGS of Q2 are same. Now the constant current source biasing is connected to the drain of the MOSFET or drain of the current mirror circuit. Therefore, the same 1 milliampere current also flows through the constant current biasing circuit. If 1 milliampere current flows through the Q3 transistor, then VGS required for the Q3 transistor is also 2 volts. Once we know the gate to source voltage of Q3 transistor as 2 volt, we can determine the voltage at the source of Q3 or voltage of voltage at the drain of Q2 transistor. Since VGS equals 2 volt, the gate terminal of Q3 transistor is connected to the ground through the RG. The voltage at the gate of Q3 is 0 volt. Then we can estimate voltage at the source of Q3. Since VGS equals 2 volt, VG is 0 volt. The voltage at the source of Q3 will be minus 2 volt. Once we know the source voltage of Q3 transistor as minus 2 volt, this source voltage of Q3 is also equal to drain voltage of Q2 transistor. The drain voltage of Q2 transistor is minus 2 volt and the source voltage of Q2 transistor is connected to negative power supply which is minus 10 volt. Then we can calculate drain to source voltage of the Q2 transistor which is equal to 8 volts. Once we know drain to source voltage of the Q2 transistor as 8 volt, now we can apply thumb rule and determine voltage distribution across Q2 and Q3 transistor. The negative supply voltage minus VSS is minus 10 volt and the positive supply voltage VDD is 10 volts. Total supply voltage is 20 volts. Now we can apply the thumb rule to determine the voltage across each component. The voltage across the drain to source of the MOSFET Q2 is 8 volts that we already estimated. The voltage between VD2 to VDD to minus VSS is 20 volt. Therefore, the voltage between VDD to the source of Q3 will be 12 volts. That is 20 minus 8 volts, which is equal to 12 volts. Therefore, the voltage across Q3 and RD is 12 volt. Again, we can apply thumb rule and determine the voltage across Q3 and RD. The voltage across Q3 will be half of the 12 volt, which is 6 volt, and voltage across RD will be 6 volt. Now, VDS of Q3 is 6 volt. Now, voltage across RD is 6 volt. Current flowing through RD is 1 milliampere. Therefore, we can calculate the value of RD as uh, which is equivalent to 6 kilo ohm. Now we can calculate voltage at the drain of Q3 transistor. Since we know VDD is 10 volt, the drop across RD is 6 volt. The voltage at the drain of Q3 is 10 minus 6 volt, which is equal to 4 volt. Now based on the voltages calculated for Q3, we can verify whether the transistor Q3 operates in saturation or not. Let us estimate VGD of Q3 transistor. VG equals 0 volt. VD equals 4 volt. Therefore, VGD is minus 4 volt. The threshold voltage of the transistor Q3 is typically 1 volt. VGD is less than the VT of the Q3 transistor. Therefore, Q3 operates in saturation region. Now let us determine the gate voltage of the Q2 transistor. The source voltage of Q2 transistor is at minus 10 volt. VGS of Q2 is 2 volt. 
based on VGS and VS, we can calculate voltage at the gate of Q2 transistor, which is equal to minus 8 volt. Now, the gate voltage of the Q2 transistor is minus 8 volt. The drain voltage of the Q2 transistor is minus 2 volt. We can verify whether Q2 operates in saturation or not by estimating the VGD of Q2 transistor. The VGD of Q2 transistor is VG minus VD which is equal to minus 6 volt. The VT of the transistor is 1 volt. Therefore, VGD is less than VT. Therefore, we can say that the Q2 transistor operates in saturation region. The gate voltage of Q2 transistor is minus 8 volt, which is also equal to gate voltage of Q1 transistor. For Q1 transistor, Vg is equal to Vd since both are shorted. Therefore, Vg equals Vd equals minus 8 volt. Once we know the drain voltage of Q1 transistor as minus 8 volt, the source of Q1 is at minus 10 volt. Therefore, Vds of Q1 can be estimated and it is found to be 2 volt. Once we short gate and the drain of the transistor, by default, the transistor will be in saturation region since VGD equals 0 volt. VT will be 1 volt. VGD will be less than the VT of the transistor. Therefore, the transistor operates in saturation region. More importantly, in this biasing scheme, we need to determine the output voltage swing. And let us compare the swing of the constant current source biasing with other biasing methods. In this biasing scheme, the voltage at the drain is 4 volt for this example. Therefore, the sinusoidal wave applied at the gate of the MOSFET oscillate across the 4 volt at the drain of the Q3 transistor. Now, to determine the maximum positive spin and negative spin, we can use basic method. The positive voltage of the sine wave can go up to the VDD. Since we have chosen VDD as 10 volt, the maximum positive signal can go up to 10 volt. Since voltage at the drain is 4 volt, maximum positive signal swing is 10 volts minus 4 volts which is equal to 6 volt. Therefore, we can say maximum positive signal swing of constant current source biasing is 6 volt. Now, let us calculate maximum negative voltage swing of constant current source biasing. The negative excursion of the signal can go up to Vg minus Vt. Vg for the Q3 transistor is 0 volt. Vg minus Vt is minus 1 volt. Therefore, the negative swing signal can excursion to minus 1 volt. Now, based on this voltage, we can determine maximum negative signal swing, which is 4 minus of minus 1 volt, which is equal to 5 volt. Now, if we compare positive swing and negative swing maximum values, we can say that the constant current source biasing has maximum positive signal swing of 6 volt and maximum negative signal swing of 5 volt, which is far better than other biasing schemes. The current mirror circuit connected to this biasing scheme has some drawbacks. As we have seen that the current transfer ratio 1 milliampere shown here which is also mirror of the 1 milliampere flowing here is true only for ideal conditions. For practical conditions as we have seen the voltage across drain and source is 8 volt. The voltage across drain and source of Q1 is 2 volt. 
for ideal conditions, even though the voltage across Q1 transistor is 2 volt and voltage across Q2 transistor is 8 volt, the current flow across through the Q2 transistor will be same as current flow through the Q1 transistor only for ideal conditions. For practical conditions, if we assume the channel length modulation effects for Q1 and Q2 transistor, the drain source characteristics, VDS versus ID characteristics can be shown here. Since VDS of Q1 is 2 volt, VDS of Q2 is 8 volt. If you assume there is no channel length modulation effects, that is lambda equals to 0, the curve will be a straight line. Although there is a different in drain source voltages, 2 volt across Q1 and 8 volt across Q2, the current through the circuit, current through the Q1 and Q2 remains same. However, if we consider channel length modulation effects, there will be a slope and the slope here is equal to 1 over R0 which is the early effect resistance of Q2 or Q1. Now due to the early effect, there will be a finite slope and because of which VDS of Q1 equals 2 volts gives the current say ID1 and VDS of Q2 equals 8 volts gives some other current as say I2. Now for two different drain source voltages we get two different drain currents here. This shows that current through the Q2 is not same as current through the Q1. This is the main drawback of the current mirror circuit. This drawback can be stated simply saying that the current transfer ratio of Q2 transistor over Q1 transistor is not equal to 1. This is because the transistor when they exhibit channel length modulation effects, variation of drain source voltage across each transistor gives different currents here. But for ideal conditions, the current flowing through the Q2 transistor will be same as current flowing through the Q1 transistor. The same is illustrated through this equation. VDS of Q1 is 2 volt, VDS of Q2 is 8 volt. This implies that for the transistor with channel length modulation effects, the drain current of Q1 is not equal to drain current of Q2. Therefore, the current mirror circuit fails to produce the mirror effect on the other branch. This is the main drawback of current mirror circuit. However, this drawback can be overcome by improving the uh, current mirror circuits in the upcoming video lectures.